So welcome to Design by Peck. The project we've got here is we've got a leaky faucet in the bathroom. It's not, you don't see it right now because I've turned the water off. And you've also noticed the water kind of cut into the wall a little bit. One of the things I've noticed by doing research here, when you have a wall mount faucet and handles, generally speaking, there's not a local water shut off. So I had to do a whole house water shut off in order for the water to stop coming through. I've also cut into the back side of this in order to kind of see what was going on. I've never done a wall mounted faucet repair. Um, and so I'm gonna take a look at the back side. So that's what we're gonna go next. So you can see I've got a bunch of cutouts here. I didn't know what I was working with, so I kind of what took a, more than I needed to just to see what was going on. I cut out here above the handles and the faucet, the valves, here down below. Here's the cold water, the hot water's to the right where the two by four is. There's also a wooden support beam right here, which is where the drywall was not cut out. This here was just out of curiosity to see if anything went over here and there's not, so you don't see anything behind that right there. As well, I noticed when you take out the valves, some water kind of leaks through and gets down into the bottom here. So I just put in a couple of towels here to kind of soak up the water so that nothing gets down, down below and moves the drywall or gets any kind of uh, mold or anything. Since this is against the two by four, for this one, I just kind of shove it in there just to try and kind of soak up all the water. So to get access to this, then we just take these off. The handles themselves are just held on by a small Allen key bolt. And so you just go in here, it might be hard to see, just kind of twist it. It's not very tight, it's not structural, it's just half a turn and you pull it right up. Here's a different angle so you can see better the Allen key and the nut that I'm unscrewing because the last view I don't think you could see it very well. So hopefully you can see it better here. Make sure you don't screw it off too much because it's a really small bolt and it's easy to lose. So just do a half a turn enough to make it loose and then just pull it right off. The second part here, this is just a structure, I mean an aesthetic piece, and it just kind of screws off. That's it. Sometimes, like it happened when I took these off initially, uh, it was stuck to the drywall a little bit because of the wet paint, they put it on with wet paint. So just a little bit of force, don't try to rip the paint or anything. If you don't have to, they come right off. So the second, the same thing here. Loosen it, slide it right off, and then this. So they're both off now, we kind of get access to the stems now. In this case, these decorative pieces right here screw onto a separate threaded part right here. And these are hand tight, and they just take those right off. So now we're looking at the handle valve. And this is what usually causes 95% of all faucet leaks is the handle valve. So I'm gonna replace these, both of these, because I don't know whether the hot or cold is the one that's causing the leak. But even if it's only one, they're both old, I should probably replace them both. So, I might have to go to the back side to get access to the, to be able to unscrew this and this just goes around this. And then, yeah, I'll need to go to the other side to get access to take that off. So it's gonna be a tight squeeze. I'm not sure how well the camera is gonna be able to watch me do it, but if you get close here, you can see you get access to this nut right here. So I'm just gonna take my wrench and loosen that nut right there where my middle finger is to take the valve off. I just need to make it loose enough to make it hand loose. And then from the bathroom side, I can unscrew it with my hand. So it's gonna go inside here. There we go, so that's now hand loose. I'll finish that from the other side. And let's do this here now. This one is a really tight squeeze. Believe it or not, I have to get access from below here. There we go. So both now hand loose. So let's go to the other side and we'll take them right off. So here we are again. Let's take this one off. Just hand loose, so here it is. So in my case, I actually didn't know who made this. There was no stamping of any manufacturer on this. So I went to my local plumbing place and I gave them this and they had a big catalog of things to show me or to look at and they found the replacement part. You can see that it's different lengths. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to install it, measure where to cut it, and then have a saw to cut it off to length and then I'm gonna go install it. 
So in, in this case, unlike my old ones, they have red and, and blue for hot and cold. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Alright, so the reason I'm putting in here first is, I, like I said earlier, 95% of all leaks are from the valve. If this is 5% that it's not the valve, I want to be able to return the, the part and then do something else to go fix the leak. So I'm going to put them, install them, see if the leak is stopped, and if they are, then I'm good to finish the installation. It's a little bit tight squeeze, but I'm getting it. I am turning it, if you can't tell. Here we go. So let's put this other one back in. You see a little bit of water dripped out. So I know these are only hand tight, but my concern is not whether water drips from here, which they won't once I do use the wrench. I want to see when I turn the house water on, whether the water's going to drip right there. So now in the basement, I'm going to show you the water shut off and turn on valve. Every house will be different. If your house has a basement, I believe 99% of the time it's going to be in the basement. In our case, this is a finished room, office slash music room. But right here, you can see... Um, slash storage Slash closet. storage, you're right. <laughs> There's a shutoff valve before the meter and there's one after the meter before the meter. Okay. And then there's the meter, so the pipe goes up, it goes around. Then here's after the meter and this goes through the rest of the house. It goes to the faucets, it goes to the uh, hot water tank. So I'm gonna now turn this all the way on. Um, there we go, it gets a little tight sometimes. Oh, you can hear it now. Now let's go check the faucets. Cross our fingers because if uh, the valves didn't fix the uh, leaky faucet, it's going to be something else and we'll work on that now. So last you saw, I turned on the water. And I came upstairs, the valves were on and water was coming out, which is not a big issue. But lesson learned, we all learned from our mistakes. Hand tight is not tight enough. Um, water was leaking out here. And when I went to go turn the valves to turn the water on or off, because this was hand tight, those were loosening as well. So <clears throat> I ran downstairs, turned the water back off. And to get better access, because this was not giving me the right amount of access, I grabbed my handy dandy uh, wrenches here. It was the 17 millimeter that I used. And I just did it by hand from right here until I kind of locked them place and it was shut. So <clears throat> after that, I went back downstairs, turned the water back on. And here we go. We got Fix the leaky faucet. So, perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these stems to length one, and then I'm going to put everything back together, make sure it works once it does. I'll be doing a drywall repair on this side. The other side, hopefully we're going to build some built-ins. And that'll be another video. All right, so I got the replacement valves and I put them in. And I turned and I just screwed it in with the wrench. I turned the water on, stopped the leak. Perfect. So now I need to put um, this on to attach the escuchi, and I believe I called it correctly. I don't know why they make such a complicated word for that, but it's the ornamental piece that covers the hole in the wall. But when I went to go do it, this is a two piece item here. This is supposed to screw into this, just like that. And this screws into this, like that. And then this screw, screws right onto that. Well, when I went to go put it on this, you notice this is a nut and your threads inside it. That's threaded on the outside. So off to the plumbing store, I had to get an adapter piece to make this work. So they managed to give me an all thread that was a lot longer than this. Um, I already cut it down to size, but this screws on top of the thread there just like that and then I screwed on the escutcheon like this and then I measured it to the width of the wall where it was going to stop I marked it with a sharpie and then I cut it with a hacksaw so now what I'm going to do next is I now have to cut down the flanges down to the right size so what length should the flanges be so 
I measured this. This goes in about the depth of about four of these flanges. So it gives me some room. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact. There's like some room, wiggle room to, depending how long it is. But I can see here, if you look here, I should cut down about two of the flanges or two and a half, maybe three of the flanges. So I'm gonna cut down one, two, three flanges, cut it to there. And then this should slide right on. It'll be flush against the wall. So I'm gonna cut these down next. And then after that, I'm gonna take it apart again, put the drywall on, put the tape around and cover the drywall, paint it, and then put everything back in place. Okay, so I just got, I have myself a, a mini clamp on vise. Some of you might have a bigger vise built into uh, a workbench. I don't have that, so I just have this mini vise. I don't wanna ruin this part. It's actually pretty expensive, so I'm gonna wrap it around here and it's kind of, it's brass there. So I'll be able to hold it just to kind of give me a little bit of leverage and so I'm not damaging the part. Let's loosen this up a little bit. Kind of put it in there. Not too tight, but tight enough to, it's still gonna move up and down, but I'm gonna hold it. At least it's not gonna move side to side. So I have just a regular hacksaw and I said I'm gonna cut about three flanges right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these three flanges. Now we're gonna go inside and we'll see if we've got the right length. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put this in. I'm not gonna turn the water on right now, so I'm not gonna make it wrench tight. I'm just gonna finger tight for the moment. It's gonna be pretty close to what we, we need. Let's put on the all thread. It's just finger tight right there. And then uh, let's put on the escutcheon. Let's see if I can get this right. Because I cut, there we go. And what I do, just a little simple trick, grab it flush against the wall. I just put a piece of paper until it's flush so I know when to stop. There we go, flush against the wall. And then let's go see if this is gonna fit right on. And it does, perfect. So you want a tiny bit of gap because this is gonna move and that's not, so you don't want it flush against the escutcheon, but just enough, and there we go. We have it perfect. We have the right lengths and everything's cut. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna prepare uh, the drywall and the wall to go do a patch to cover it up. And then I'll be painting it and putting everything back on. Thanks everyone for watching my first Design by Pack repair video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I had making it. If you liked what you saw, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, I've got some future projects coming down the road. Uh, I'll be publishing a painting video on painting the bathroom that I just did. I'll be doing a drywall repair video as well. And then my re next really big project is making a um, built-ins on that room, the blue room that was behind the bathroom that you saw in the first video. I'll be making uh, built-ins for that over the next few weeks. Thanks so much and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.